everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we will be discussing the inline 5 engine and its history. Anyway, let's get into the video. The inline 5 engine stands out as one of the most unique and intriguing designs in automotive history. Position between the practicality of an inline 4 and the smoothness of an inline 6, the inline 5 offered a distinct balance of size, power, and efficiency. Yet its journey has been defined both by innovation and challenges. In this video, we'll explore the history of the inline 5 engine, from its creation to its quirks, including the difficulties carburating it and the signature sound that makes it reminiscent of a baby V10. Now let's go back to the 1970s, as the inline 5 story begins here during a time of the oil crisis and increasing environmental regulations. Automakers were under pressure to produce engines that balanced power and efficiency while being compact enough for evolving vehicle designs. Audi became the first automaker to introduce the inline 5, debuting in the Audi 100 in 1976. Audi engineers chose the inline 5 to bridge the gap between efficiency of an inline 4 and the refinement and smoothness of an inline 6. Its odd number of cylinders gave it a distinct firing order that resulted in smoother performance than an inline 4, while being shorter and lighter than a straight 6. However, this layout came with unique challenges, most notably achieving consistent and efficient fuel delivery in an era dominated by carbureted engines. The inline 5's odd cylinder count and 144 degree firing interval pose significant problems for traditional carburetor setups. Here's why. If you used a single carburetor setup, the engine would struggle to distribute fuel evenly across all five cylinders due to the uneven vacuum pulses created by the firing sequence. This led to inconsistent air-fuel mixtures, with some cylinders running rich and others lean, resulting in rough idling and poor performance. And by using two carburetors, one for three cylinders and another for two, seemed logical at first, but introduced imbalance as the two carburetors couldn't be perfectly tuned to provide equal performance across an uneven split of cylinders. This made the engine harder to tune and maintain, especially for mass market vehicles. And so, the only workable solution for carburation was to use one carburetor per cylinder, ensuring each cylinder received a constant air-fuel mixture. While effective, this setup was costly, complex, and inefficient. Tuning five carburetors required expertise, and fuel economy suffered as each carburetor worked independently. The difficulties with carburating this engine pushed automakers like Audi to adopt fuel injection. Audi's implementation of the Bosch k jectronic mechanical fuel injection system solved the inline 5's fueling issues by delivering precise amounts of fuel to each cylinder. Fuel injection ensured constant performance, smoother operation, and better efficiency overall. The shift marked a turning point for the inline 5, allowing it to thrive in vehicles like the Audi 100 and the legendary Audi Quattro, where it became a motorsport icon. Turbocharging further enhanced its appeal, with Audi's 2.1 liter turbocharged 5-cylinder dominating the rally stage in the 1980s. While Audi made the inline 5 popular for gasoline engines, Mercedes-Benz championed it in the diesel segment. Introduced in 1974, the OM617 diesel became a symbol of durability and reliability. This 3-liter inline 5 was used in models like the W123 300D and W116 300SD, where it earned a reputation for being nearly indestructible and there are still some examples of these cars that have over 400,000 miles on them. As this engine refuses to quit, its cast iron construction and simple design made it a favorite for high mileage drivers such as taxi services, which are still used to this day. The OM617's use of pre-chamber design for its indirect injection helped it achieve smoother combustion and reduce the diesel clatter typically associated with engines of its time. Although it wasn't powerful by modern standards, producing around 80 to 125 horsepower depending on the version, its focus was on efficiency and longevity, making it a key player in Mercedes-Benz diesel legacy. One of the inline 5's most beloved traits is its distinct sound, often described as a baby V10. This is due to its firing order, which is 1, 2, 4, 5, 3, 
which produces that odd, iconic sputtering sound along with the odd cylinder configuration which create a harmonic resonance similar to that of a 10 cylinder engine, just scaled down. Line 5's warbling growl is particularly pronounced in turbocharged engines such as Audi's iconic 2.5 TFSI, which continues to power high performance RS models. Enthusiasts have come to love this sound, but not for its uniqueness, but because it invokes a sense of power and sophistication reminiscent of a larger high performance engine like a V10. The inline 5 found its way into a variety of vehicles over the years. Audi used it extensively in both luxury performance models, while Volvo adopted it for its durability and torque in cars like the 850 and S70. General Motors also experimented with it in the Chevrolet Colorado and GMC Canyon along with the Hummer, which is crazy, offering more power than a 4-cylinder but without the bulk of a V6. I couldn't even imagine a Hummer with a base inline 5 engine. Volkswagen also explored the inline 5 engine, introducing it in the 1970s in vehicles like the Passat and the LT van. Later iterations like the 2.5 liter found in the North American Jetta, Golf, and New Beetle emphasized torque and simplicity. One of the most notable Volkswagen inline 5 engines was the turbocharged 2.5 liter used in the Mark V and the Mark VI Golf R and Jetta GLI delivering performance with the characteristic warble of an inline 5. However, Volkswagen eventually transitioned away from this layout, favoring more efficient turbocharged 4 cylinders. I also have a bonus engine layout. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you 3 seconds. 3, 2, 1. It's the Volkswagen VR5 engine. This engine is a distant cousin of the inline 5. The VR5 was introduced in 1997 and was essentially a narrower, staggered cylinder in line 5 built off Volkswagen's VR6 architecture, that's for another video. With a 15 degree angle between its cylinders, the VR5 was compact enough to fit in a small engine bay, making it ideal for vehicles like the Passat and Golf. While the VR5 produced respectable power for its size, its unorthodox design was short-lived, as Volkswagen focused on more conventional layouts in later years, Still, it remains a quirky and innovative solution that blended characteristics of inline and V engines alike. Volvo was another big manufacturer of the inline 5 engine, and their contribution to its development cannot be overlooked. Starting in the early 1990s, Volvo adopted the inline 5 as a cornerstone of their powertrain lineup, aiming to blend performance, efficiency, and durability. The Volvo 850, introduced in 1991, marked the debut of their inline 5 engine. It came both naturally aspirated and turbocharged, with displacements ranging from 2 liters to 2.5 liters. Volvo's turbocharged inline 5 engines, such as the legendary T5 variants, became particularly well known for their spirited performance and robust construction. In vehicles like the 850T5R and later the V70R, the inline 5 provided exhilarating acceleration with a distinct throaty exhaust note that Volvo fans grew to love. With power outputs for these cars reaching up to 300 horsepower in high performance applications, these engines became symbols of Volvo's ability to balance practicality with excitement. Volvo's inline 5 engines were also engineered for longevity, just like Mercedes, often achieving well over 200,000 miles with proper maintenance. Their combination of power and reliability ensured that they became a staple in Volvo's lineup for over two decades eventually being phased out in favor of modern turbocharged inline 4s, and also apparently twin-charged inline 4s too, which is a supercharged and turbocharged 4-cylinder. I don't get why they couldn't have kept the inline 5, it seems a lot simpler. The inline 5 was practically significant to Volvo's identity as it helped the brand shed its image of being solely about safety and practicality, showcasing as a sportier and more performance-oriented side. Despite its advantages, the inline 5 eventually fell out of favor as automakers shifted towards smaller, more efficient turbocharged 4 cylinders. Additionally, its longer length made it harder to fit into modern front wheel drive platforms. Today, the inline 5 lives on in select high performance vehicles, most notably Audi's RS3, 
where the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine produces over 400 horsepower while still delivering its signature sound. In conclusion, the inline 5 engine may have never achieved the versatility of the inline 4 or the praise of the inline 6, but its legacy is impacting from its innovative introduction in the Audi 100 to its glory days in motorsport, the inline 5 has carved out a unique place in automotive history for itself. Its distinctive sound, innovative engineering, and quirky challenges make it one of the most fascinating engine layouts ever created. So next time you hear the unmistakable warble of a baby V10, you'll know that you're listening to the heart of an inline 5. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like down below and comment if you own any cars with an inline 5. And if you really like this video, maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.